Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin music. Today we have a fantastic waltz in D flat major, opus 64, number one. A very, very famous piece. So let's start from the music. <laughs> a fantastic short piece of music, salon music, um, waltz, uh, and we can think that oh, Chopin was so happy when he wrote it. He was joking, he was uh, thinking about dancing, he had a fantastic mood, uh, maybe, but generally speaking this piece was written uh, in the last years of his life. It, he was written, it was written uh, when he Mm, well, more or less two, three years before his death, when his health was terrible, when his general mood was terrible, when he was suffering from depression, uh, he was quite lonely and he didn't really feel well. And this is very fascinating. Um, when we compare this waltz to other pieces that Chopin wrote at this time, if you know his music, Polonaise Fantasy, Mazurka's Opus 63, Nocturnos Opus 62, Barcarolle Opus 60, Mazurka's Opus 59, Cello Sonata Opus 65. Well, these are not easy pieces. These are not pieces that we are laughing while listening them to them. Chopin is uh, trying to be simple. Definitely. And this is interesting because probably waltzes are the only genre in Chopin's music. Uh, when he didn't try to experiment, he didn't want to, as we, as we say, he didn't want to open the doors which are already opened. <laughs> he was just um, uh, trying to write salon music to impress uh, all the salons. But in the year 1846-47 he didn't need to impress anymore because everybody knew him. He was a star. So why is he writing this? And this is a question without an answer. One of the answers is the woman to whom he dedicated this piece. La Comtesse um, Potocka, who was his student uh, from early uh, years and who was his friend and with whom Chopin had a contact sending letters for until his last days of life. Uh, she was an extremely uh, extremely popular, we would say, woman in the 
Paris salons. Um, she was a friend of most of the greatest artists that time, especially Polish artists, but not only. She was um, a friend of Mickiewicz, Słowacki, Norwid, our best poets uh, in the history of Poland, we could say from that time, the Romantic, Romantic era. She was a muse, she was inspiring many artists, she was really a great woman and very important person for artists in general, also for Chopin. And she had a little dog. And this was the inspiration for Chopin to write this, this piece. In English we call this piece Minute Waltz, and this is the popular name in English but not in every language. Also in Polish we call it like this, minute waltz. But in f French the waltz is called la petite chienne. Um, la petite chienne, we, chienne mit, means a little dog, doggy. Also in Japanese they, uh, they, dat, they don't know the name uh, minute waltz, they know the name doggy. Uh, so uh, it's very interesting. And why doggy? Well, because the little dog of uh, La Comtesse Potocka was the inspiration for Chopin um, to write this piece. Little dog who is running around himself to try and trying to catch uh, his tail. We all know if you saw little dog doing this, he's trying to bite his tail and it's so funny always. We are laughing and Actually, it's funny for everybody, but not for the dog. Usually the dog, when he's doing this, is angry and sometimes barking and really not in a good mood. He's not having fun at all, uh, at least from what I've experienced. Um, but, well, Chopin definitely, for Chopin it was funny. He wanted to impress, probably. Potocka, he wanted, you know, even when we have depression, even when we have very bad times, uh, there are sometimes uh, moments, if if, if, if deeply inside us we have the sense of humor, we have, when, we, when everything would be good, we were very joking, etc. Et, et there are sometimes moments when we still want to joke. And probably this is one of these moments for Chopin. Uh, so he writes a very, very short, fantastic piece of music. And okay. Now, how to show, uh, using the music, how to show the dog uh, running around? Well, we have to find some kind of um, motif which goes up and down. We could do it, for example, up and down. The problem with this is that it's not really cir uh, circles. These are not circles, but up and down, up and down, up and down. So like in the mountains, you know, so so we can't do it. So instead Chopin um, um, found a better way. And he found a fantastic way using only two motifs uh, consisting of two notes only. One and two. And the first two notes are going up and the second from up to down. And they are connected. And this is that that is everything. But um, then we we immediately when we close our eyes we see the doggy. Fantastic, isn't it fantastic? And then the left hand, the left hand is playing a waltz. But there is one thing which disturbs us. What is this? And now, if you know my other episodes about waltzes. Please answer this question. Maybe you can. What is wrong between the hands? I know it's not easy question. I know it very well. Um, do you remember Walls Opus 34, number 3? It's exactly the same problem here. Left hand is playing Walls. One, two, three, one, two, three, but right hand is not. Right hand is playing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And we, we 
cannot play it on three. If if I try to play right hand on the on three, it would be like I would I would ask the elephant to climb the tree. And I would say, yes, you can, of course, look at the cat. The cat can, so you can also do it. Uh, and I would push him and I would try to do it. Well, he would never. And the same is with the red, right hand here. Of course, I can try to play it on three, but it will sound very bad because look, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Can you hear the, what is wrong? The wrong is that the second one in which we have the accent is on the wrong note. So it's a one, two, three. We cannot have the accent here. So we cannot play right hand on three. So here comes the conflict. But the conflict here is only in four bars. When we reach the top, here they are together. So they, they can... For the moment they are together and this is the most elegant moment in all this first part when we can take time and um, here in this moment um, when the hands are together comes one of one of the most difficult moments for pianists um, here written well generally speaking this waltz is not written to be difficult but it's written to be elegant and beautiful but in this moment every artist every pianist struggle with this very short uh, If you are a pianist, you know what I'm talking about. Um, well, I have, I have here this, the kind of solution, which first of all, definitely it's very good to take time here. The music needs to take time. If we play it rushing, it is not elegant enough. So think about aristocracy. Think about the, the French aristocratic, um, aristocracy. Think about aristocrats, about how fantastic they behaved they were the the bowing and the, this dancing and here we have exactly and then we can take a little bit time between these two notes when we start this short note but this is just a technical thing for pianists not for everybody of course uh, but maybe it's interesting also for you if you're not a musician anyway um uh, just listen to this uh, circling around. So how fantastically it's written. The first bars we have the doggy. The next two bars we have the aristocrats sitting maybe and looking at this dog. So, so and now this is not a dog anymore. This is dog again. Again then. comes the second part which we have the dog but the dog is still making circles but also is moving before it was not moving now it's moving and it's going up maybe a kind of I don't know staircase or something like this listen one two I'm talking about the circles now first second now he is in a different position third fourth so fourth time going up and then he is going down very fast and then again going up and this way this is what makes it so funny and down up so i want to show you um, how this is constructed when it comes to phrasing because when we listen to this piece in a full speed we don't have time to really absorb it so once again the first the second, the fourth, third, the fourth, and now, and again, the answer, and the second time, the, the same thing. And this is repeated, and after that we have the salon, we have the walls, we want to dance, the dog stops because everybody starts to dance and the dog is looking at them and listening what's going on and watching them what are they doing so he is not focused on his tail anymore the left hand continues 
playing the rhythm of walls. And it should be as dance dancing as possible, as dancing, as elegant as we possibly can to, can play. Um, and the right hand has a very, very simple melody. I will play for you now only the bass of the melody without any embellished notes, the notes which makes it more beautiful. We will hear only the, the skeleton, let's say, of the melody. Just listen, this is like that. the skeleton and now what Chopin is making he is not um, writing a lot of notes no 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 because we don't need here a lot of notes he only add one note in the down and again the same probably profound moment in this wall so we have the chromatic scale that's the most the most uh, embellished moment in this waltz. and in the second time the same phrase appears so we don't have any other melody it's very very simple the only um, difference is that we have a little bell in in the in the upper voice which is um, adding, um, which is added to this melody. All the time the same note. Of course we don't play like this, but I just want to show you this. All the time, all the time. Here with this bell, it sounds fantastically, in my opinion, when the pianist um, make the left hand uh, play a little bit the, in the Viennese style walls um, with the two a little bit separated from three, because it makes us the the it it makes us want to dance when we play. <laughs> of course, you don't have to play like this, but. You can, if you want to have fun, if you want the audience to smile and to feel like they are in the, maybe in Vienna, in the New Year's concert of, of the uh, Vienna Philharmonics. And that sounds a little bit like that. All this melody is so elegant, so fantastic. And it ends with the question, with the question without the answer. So we have... Uh, There is no answer to this. Instead, the doggy. And we have the part A again. What a wonderful way. Well, what is this middle part? Well, we can also say that maybe this middle part is a portrait of uh, La Comtesse Pototska. Maybe this is um, the way how Chopin wanted to uh, draw her using sounds. And tones and maybe he told her afterwards look this is how I see you this is how I think you are it's very very this the phrase is like a woman ending of the piece we have no coda strange we have no other melody strange we have no new material which is more difficult which is more uh, brilliant and more virtuoso and more showing off strange very strange instead we have only one scale going from up to down from the 
half of the keyboard because Chopin is using, I don't know if you know it, but the note which, which we reach at the end, which is F, was the, the last key in Chopin's piano. In, in our pianos we still have six more, but in his pianos the, the, the pianos were a little more narrow, so this was the last key. Very interesting. So this key is the last and then we go down. This is almost like Chopin wanted to, pl uh, to write the glissando, but the glissando here doesn't really work. Uh, well, Franz Liszt could write a glissando. He sometimes used glissandos, as you know, maybe. Chopin never used glissandos. It was not his style. But instead he writes a very fast scale, which sounds almost like a glissando. And then everything ends with the uh, a burst of happiness, we can say. Well, okay, so it's very short. I have nothing to say more now about it. Just would like to play for you again to make you smile at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and please feel invited to my other videos about fantastic Chopin's music. See you again. Bye bye.